ex Rose McGowan ISNT afraid to speak her truth. In her new memoir, Brave, which was released on Tuesday, the 44-year-old actress and activist lays it all out in print, outlining her childhood, her unlikely start in show business, her illicit relationships and the alleged UAL assault she endured at the hands of producer Harvey Weinstein, whom she refers to in the book only as the monster. Weinstein continues to deny McGowan's allegations of non-consensual UAL contact. McGowan writes about the arc of her career in Hollywood, and professional and personal interactions with Quentin Tarantino, Ben Affleck, and director Robert Rodriguez. She also calls out those who worked closely with her agents, publicists, lawyers, and more. She touches on her internal struggles, from growing up in the Children of God cult to battling an eating disorder to living on the street as a preteen. Though McGowan has been plenty vocal on social media and in the New York Times exposed that ultimately led to Weinstein's downfall, the claims she makes in Brave don't hold anything back. Here are her most shocking revelations. 1. Why she shaved her head Getty images noting that the two periods of time she had long hair were the hardest in my life. McGowan writes that her lengthy tresses made it easier for people to objectify her. My hairdressers were gay males, and I was the Barbie come to life at least that's what they told me. I didn't think I looked like Barbie. I thought I looked more like a blow-up doll, the kind with a hole for the mouth. I had been turned into the ultimate fantasy F asterisk asterisk K toy by the Hollywood machine, she explains. When I shaved my head, it was a battle cry, but more than that it gave me an answer to the question I so hated. Did I break up with someone? Yes, I broke up with the world. Point two. Growing up in the Children of God McGowan says she was born in a barn in Italy and was raised as a member of the Children of God, alongside her parents and siblings. While she doesn't specify how old she was while in the cult, she alleges her father told her mother that he was going to take another wife. McGowan also alleges that during her family's time in the cult, she was physically abused and claims leaders of the Children of God started advocating child adult. I saw an 11-year-old girl being forced to sit next to a man with his floppy d asterisk asterisk k on his leg. They made her sit between his legs so he could massage her back, she alleges. I saw her tears. Even then I knew none of it was normal, whatever normal was. Her father left the cult with McGowan, she alleges, his other children and his other wife, leaving her mother behind. After her mother left the cult, she lived with McGowan's new stepfather, Lawrence. She describes him as a mean man and alleges that his daughter, Mary, later claimed he was usually molesting her and brought charges against him. Mary, who was about 14 at the time, and I were forced to take baths together while Lawrence watched. Apparently Lawrence liked blondes, and thank God I had dark hair, she alleges. 3. The alleged Harvey Weinstein incident Getty Images McGowan recalls her first interaction with Weinstein was at a screening of her, going all the way, at the 1997 Sundance Film Festival, where he sat behind her in the theater. The film had a topless scene in it, and McGowan writes that it humiliated her at the time. Shortly after, Weinstein, referred to as the monster in the book, I requested a meeting with her in a hotel in Park City, Utah. I was repulsed immediately, she writes, alleging that as she was leaving the hotel suite, she was stopped her outside of a room that held a jacuzzi. It all happens so fast. My clothes are getting peeled off me, she writes of the alleged encounter. I back into the wall, but there's nowhere to go. I freeze, like a statue. I don't know what's happening my sweater is being pulled over my head and his hands pull my pants down. He bends over and pulls my shoes off. I'm now. This all happened in the space of about 30 seconds. It feels like McGowan right that Weinstein allegedly picked her up and placed her on the edge of the hot tub and pried her legs open began performing oral on her while he masturbated inside the jacuzzi. My brain starts to scramble. Survival instinct kicks in and I am desperately trying to figure out how to get the F asterisk asterisk K away and make it stop, she writes about the alleged incident. I don't know how else to get out of this situation, so I remember the when Harry met Sally with its big fake orgasm scene. So I did that, that same day, McGowan says that she went to a press event for her film, Phantoms, and claims that she told her co-star, Ben Affleck, about the alleged ordeal, I am shaking and my eyes fill with tears I say where I've just come from, and my co-star says, god damn it. I told him to stop doing that, she alleges. This repeats a claim McGowan has made on Twitter, Affleck has not directly responded. 
ET has reached out to a representative for Affleck for comment. The actress also alleges that Weinstein tried calling her several times, saying she was his new special friend and that other big actresses who had worked with him and won Oscars were also his special friends. McGowan writes that her manager told her to look at this as a step forward in her career and one lawyer advised her against taking legal action. A higher up at her management agency allegedly said, God damn it, I just heard an expose about him and in the LA Times he owes it to me not to do this in a settlement. She was allegedly given $100,000 for her silence, saying, that money felt dirty. Anyway, I largely gave it away. It brought me no solace. McGowan claims she was blacklisted from most other studios in the time following the alleged incident. On Tuesday morning Weinstein's attorney, Ben Braffman, released a statement to E.T., saying, Mr. Weinstein denies Rose McGowan's allegations of non-consensual UAL contact. It is erroneous and irresponsible to conflate claims of inappropriate behavior and consensual UAL contact later regretted, with an untrue claim of point four. Rehab stint and life on the streets McGowan writes she was sent to rehab after trying LSD one time during junior high dance. Unhappy there, she ran away several times until she eventually lived on the streets. She ultimately did turn to S and almost drowned after taking acid. I remember being out there on acid, sitting on a log and looking at the ocean. The next thing I knew, the tide had come in, she says. The water got as high as my chest, at the height of winter, because I realized I was practically submerged. The problem with acid is sometimes you lose track of things, like, say, the sea level. When she finally went to live with her aunt, she realized she had contracted crabs and ringworm. 5. Alleged experiences with onset assault YouTube is an extra on the set of the 1990, class of 1999, McGowan, who was still a minor at the time, recalls being invited out with other extras by a guy she knew. However, when she went to his hotel room, she says she was alone, the door opened and I got pulled in right into his chest. Or F asterisk asterisk K. His beard scratched me as he jammed his tongue down my throat, she writes of the alleged incident. It all happened so fast. He promptly pulled down my shirt and fondled my S. Of course, it was me who fell dirty and ashamed. It didn't occur to me to say anything. For years I thought of the incident as a UAL experience versus UAL assault. Later, when I became an adult, I realized that it actually was assault. In 1995, the Doom generation she further alleges that she was asked to lie on top of another actor for her audition when he had an erection. She also allegedly experienced assault during the filming of one scene in a car. All of a sudden I felt something wet under my skirt and an insistent pushing pressure on my, she alleges. The actor had taken a bottle of water under my skirt to spray and push onto my privates. I froze. Then I snapped. I went to lunch for him, but the camera was in the way. Gregor Araki just said, Oh children. She writes that director Araki has since denied knowing exactly what happened in that moment and has defended his response. E.T. has reached out to a representative of Araki for comment. If he did not see what happened, he should not defend it. To me that's the height of misogyny and victim blaming. Gaslighting. Don't gaslight me, mother asterisk asterisk her. My remembers. My body remembers. She writes of the alleged incident, adding that the unnamed male star involved has since apologized. It is an apology I completely accept. There is no bad blood between him and me. I think H.E.S. Great point six. Battling an eating disorder Getty Images after a boyfriend, who she met when she was 15 and he was 20, commented on her legs. McGowan notes that she became obsessed with losing weight and worked out constantly, eating very little. About once every three days I allowed myself to eat something, usually a big pot of pasta. I never was able to get below 92 pounds. For some reason that was my cut-off point, she writes. Because I had read about girls who were 84 pounds, I felt like a failure. It got so bad I was hallucinating. I tried never to sit down. I was sure people could see fat dripping off me. Starving made me feel a fast kind of high. I remember thinking that at least I was superior to addicts because I was high for 3.7. Personal tragedy in 1992, when she was just 19, McGowan met a man named Brett Cantor who she says helped her get out of an abusive relationship. After getting some money and driving away, she tried calling Cantor but he never answered. I was starting to panic about having no place to stay. I hung up and called again, she says.
A man answered the phone. It W-A-S-N-T Brett. The voice identified himself as LAPD and said, Brett has been murdered. My blood ran cold and I remember nothing after that. I found out later Brett was stabbed 23 times and almost decapitated. My world, my hope, went black. The case is still unsolved, but I have been trying for years to remedy the point eight. Allegedly losing out on her Scream salary and going blonde YouTuber McGowan's first major role was as Tatum Riley in the 1996 horror Scream, but even after she earned the part, the actress says she almost lost out on the role after an alleged misstep on the part. If her lawyer, I got a call from my agent and was offered $50,000 for the part. Holy cow, that was the most money I had ever heard of coming my way. Protocol would have been for my lawyer to counter offer $100,000 and then it wind up getting $75,000, but my lawyer went back at $250,000. This so infuriated the head of the studio, he made me retest a filmed audition for the role three more times even though it already had an offer, she alleges. To me it felt like that studio head want to humiliate me and penalize me for my lawyer's p asterisk 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 in contest move. While this was going on, they cast Neve Campbell in her role, which greatly concerned McGowan as she was a fellow brunette. Noting that Hollywood rarely casts multiple females of the same hair color in main roles, she told the producers that she was thinking about going blonde. I had no desire to be blonde, but I knew that was the only way it'd get hired. My plan worked, she writes of the alleged incident. I was officially offered the part, but for less than all my counterparts because of said money. P asterisk 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 king contest. After paying my agent, manager, and lawyer, I would up probably with $12,500. 9. Her life with Marilyn Manson, and why they broke up Getty Images McGowan mostly praises her three-and-a-half-year romance from 1998 to 2001 with Manson. She said no one called him Marilyn, noting that he showed her true kindness at a dark time in her life. Manson patched me back together after the assault, she writes, adding that the life together W.A.S.N.T. nearly as strange and dramatic as people thought. The truth was that at the time when he W.A.S.N.T. creating electrifying music, Manson was painting watercolors of my Boston Terriers while I was ordering glassware from Martha Stewart's online store, she continues. It was a pretty legendary relationship, not just in the media. It was a pretty legendary relationship behind the scenes, too. We had a whole lot of amazing. In the end, McGowan said they split because she grew exhausted, a recording, I really was in love with Manson, I just couldn't do the lifestyle anymore. I was too tired. 10. Her 1998 MTV VMAs look Sigma McGowan certainly turned heads in 1998 at the MTV Video Music Awards, attending as Mason's date. She claims the X-rated look was her way of getting back at those who had usually objectified her. I thought, you know what f asterisk asterisk k you. You want to objectify me, you want to see a body, this is what you want all you media men, all you photographers, you vultures, this is what you want to see, ill f asterisk asterisk king show you a body. And so I did. Wearing the dress, as I call it, was a big middle finger to pretty much everybody. It was a reclamation of my own body after my assault, she writes. It was, of course, misinterpreted and utilized, which was the exact opposite point I was trying to make. That's the thing that other women who have copied me have gotten wrong through the years when they copy the dress, they do it to be why and turn society on. I d i d n t do it to be why. I did it with power, not to titillate a turn on the boys and men of the world. I did it as a big middle finger, and there's the difference. Point one one. On her experience with Charm Edgerty, Images McGowan opened up about the pressures of replacing Shannon Doherty on Charmed from 2001 to 2006. Everyone was hoping a D keep the show on the air and get them to their ultimate money-making goal, the holy grail known as syndication, she writes. That's a hell of a lot of pressure for someone who had only been in in films, though she seems to take mostly positives away from the experience. She did note that she often thinks of a female director, the only one the show had in the five years she was on it, a crew sank her, she says. I feel horribly about not fighting for her more, but I didnt fully understand the dynamics of what was happening. My character was too busy talking to leprechauns to have the time. Point one two. 
Her allegations against Quentin Tarantino's actress who starred in Tarantino's 2007 film Death Proof alleges that Tarantino had a known foot fetish and frequently referenced the scene where she paints her toenails in the film Jawbreaker. She also alleges that Tarantino knew about her alleged settlement with Weinstein before she was cast in his film. Tarantino has admitted to the New York Times that he knew some of what Weinstein had been accused of, saying, there was more to it than just the normal rumors, the normal gossip. It wasnt second hand. I knew he did a couple of these things. I wish I had taken responsibility for what I heard. If I had done the work I should have done then, I would have had to not work with him. E.T. has reached out to a representative of Tarantino for comment point one three. Her relationship with director Robert Rodriguez Getty Images While she was filming Death Proof, McGowan was also filming Planet Terror with director Robert Rodriguez. She alleges that she began dating him while he was still married and they were even briefly engaged. She says he had a hold over her more so than any man in her life, including her father. After she told him she wanted to have a daughter named Cherry Darling, she alleges that he took the name and made it her character's name so she could never have the child with another man. Knowing what happened with the monster, R.R. wrote a scene where Quentin tries to my character, she alleges about the episode. I didn't even know how to articulate the wrongness, so I didn't. Maybe I thought it was cathartic for me I did enjoy stabbing Quentin Tarantino in the eye with my broken wooden leg in her eyes. Rodriguez's biggest transgression was selling the film to Weinstein, which she detailed in early tweets prior to the New York Times Weinstein expose. I can't tell you what it was like to be sold into the hands of the man who had assaulted me and scarred me for life, she alleges. I had to do press events with the monster and see photos of us together, his big fat paw pulling me into his body. In the end the film was a box office flop, I think largely because they promoted it horribly, but to tell you the truth, I was happy it failed. E.T. has reached out to a representative for Rodriguez for comment point one four. The truth behind those plastic surgery rumors McGowan writes she went in for a sinus surgery she had been putting off but does not specify when this took place. Unfortunately, the surgery went wrong and a puncture was made through her skin. The whole didnt heal and she went to a plastic surgeon. Sign up for Entertainment Insider by AOL to get the hottest pop culture news delivered straight to your inbox. Subscribe to our other newsletters emails may offer personalized content or ads. Learn more. You may unsubscribe any time. He immediately performed a surgery to make the whole a thin line. I had to get reconstructive surgery on the diet and then, because the procedure pinched the eye a tiny bit higher, I had to get my other eye slightly done to match it by one millimeter, she says. I told my publicists what had happened and they said to say it was a car accident. Looking back, I don't know why it mattered, but I took their advice.